ego hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us leave 
read responsibly Psalm 130. Out of the depth have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to know what is done in this, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Here the Apostle urges the new Christians to conform to a new way of life that is pleasing to the Holy Spirit. They are to have love for one another like the love of Christ. They must put away spitefulness and other sins that harm the one body of the church and grieve the spirit with which they have been sealed in baptism. A reading from the letter to the Christians in Ephesus. Putting away falsehood let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do, do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to, to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as Christ in God has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs> The crowds, they're so used to the old story, 
that they can't see past it. So they're being held back a little bit by their context. And they start to grumble. You know that sound. Jesus is trying to use something that they already know to explain something new, right? This isn't about their ancestors in the desert. This is about God being active in the present. The present tense for Jesus and for us. The living God in the here and now is not about the past, what happened before. It's about what's happening now and what's happening in the future. And it's that past that's holding them back from really listening to Jesus' message. Um, it's their traditions and their well-taught beliefs. Now, tradition is great. Some people hear me say bad things about tradition and take it the wrong way. <laughs> right? I love traditions. I wouldn't wear a chasuble if I didn't love traditions. Jesus isn't trying to discount their traditions or beliefs. He's trying to use them as a base to expand their beliefs into something new and wonderful, right? You can't hang on to the old ways forever and never change because that, that's when you become stagnant, right? You to change and adapt to the world as the world changes. And belief in God isn't stagnant either. Because God isn't stagnant, isn't a static being. Our belief in God is ever-growing and ever-changing. Relationship. You knew I was going to say that word. Caroline Lewis explains, Theology is a verb, not a noun. God is a being, not a thing. The static nature we far too often assume about God is its own idolatry. So our traditions keep us grounded, but then if we get too rigid with them, they end up holding us back because life is change, right? This is what's happening today with the crowd. Jesus says that he comes from God, and the people say, no, he came from here. That's Mary's son. And he says, okay, well, remember the bread from heaven? I'm the new bread from heaven. And they're like, no, you're not. That was Moses. The problem with this crowd is the familiarity. The people know him and they can't comprehend that he could ever be more than what they already know. God is supposed to come down in clouds and fire and whirlwinds, right? Lightning, not this guy who I watched grow up, who played with my kids as a child, right? He can't be special. But that's part of the point of having Jesus at all, is that God comes in Jesus to show that God is with us, with us every day, in every part of our lives, even the ordinary, boring parts of our lives. God uses ordinary things to reach us every day. And we're regular folks, right? God uses us also to reach out to people. God uses bread, the most ordinary food, that most everybody likes, if not everyone can actually eat it, but <laughs> God uses bread to reach out to us, right? And we use our wafers here to reach out to us. And trust me, our wafers are very, very ordinary things, <laughs> pre-consecration. <laughs> they come in a little sleeve, you know, you buy them online, come in the mail, nothing very special about them until God's Spirit comes down upon them. Because through God, these ordinary elements become the body of Christ. They become sacraments, which are real, tangible signs of God's grace and love for us. Right? That's the same with us. We have the Spirit in us, and we become real and tangible signs of God's grace on earth. Back to my favorite crowd here. I mean, we need them to be stubborn and ornery so that we can hear the story, right? Kind of foil that way. But they're very stubborn today, and they get angry because they don't understand what, what Jesus is talking about. But on some level, they don't want to understand because they're stuck in the we've never done it that way mindset. So they miss the point. They miss the message of love that he has and the power that he has to heal and bring peace. And then... More sadly, I guess, they missed the chance to become agents of that message in the world. Right? They missed the chance to help spread that message in the world. Everything that we do 
And everything that we say in our lives represents God, right? If we're followers of, God, of Jesus. And on another level, they represent St. Stephen's too, because that's our particular community. So what kind of impression are we making on the world? It's always a good thing to ask. And if you need some help, Ephesians today has a really great list of do's and don'ts. I think I'm going to photocopy that and put it in my purse. <laughs> when I'm feeling upset, I'll read it. Because God never told us that we have to be perfect, right? That's not in the book. We don't have to be perfect to do God's will. It's actually kind of the opposite. The vast majority of the saints that we honor are we're very far from perfect. Trust me, I can tell you some stories. Anyway, but that didn't stop them from going on to do great things in Jesus' name. So we can't let our own insecurities and our preconceptions and our confusion block us from going out and helping to change the world. That's what our main mission is as Christians. To always keep trying and keep improving and being kind. So we need to be agents of God's grace in the world. Using our own talents that God gave us to do good. No matter how ordinary we think we are. God will turn us into something extraordinary. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the Nineteen Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, who God is not made, of one being with the Father, to whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, who came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, who became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. common prayer for which the response is, Lord, have mercy. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our president, for the leaders of, our nation, of the nations, for our Supreme Court, for the sanctity of our voting process, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this town of Port Washington, for every city and community, for the small businesses that support them, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For seasonable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. 
for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, for the abatement of the fires, floods, storms, and droughts we endure, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, in the air, or through outer space, and particularly for those fleeing persecution, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, particularly those impacted by the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Hank, Peter, Bob, Joe, Nina, Shirley, Mark, Pam, MB, Marion, Clay, Kai, Frank, Mark, Michael, Kimberly, Tina, Carol, Sue D, Todd, Debbie, Carol, Larry, Stephanie, Einstein, Danny M, Sarah, the Reverend Liz Tunney, Brianna Maglio, Father Guy who is sitting vigil for his mother, the residents who lost their homes due to the wildfires in the western U.S. and Canada, our brothers and sisters in Cuba and Haiti, those hurt by the recent rash of gun violence in our nation, and all those affected by COVID-19, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for the food or shelter insecure, for prisoners, captives, and victims of social injustice, and for all who remember and pray for them, care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. mercy. For our frontline workers and first responders, particularly Dr. Elizabeth Engelman, Dr. Dan Griffin, Dr. Jeff Kowalski, Dr. Rachel Simpson, Karen Yu, Eva Longmire, Brenda Marshall, Susan Dietz Massengill, Kat Bates, Marina Guerra, and those responding to natural and human made disasters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. May they rest in peace, especially those who perished in the wildfires in the western U.S. and Canada. The indigenous children who lost their culture and their lives at residential schools in the U.S., Canada, and Australia those killed nationwide as a result of gun violence, and the millions worldwide who have died from COVID-19. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of Stephen and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life. To Christ our God, to thee, O Lord our God. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. What we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us not confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. 
Beautiful girl. <laughs> Going to the airport, okay. Okay. Let me know how much I owe you for the house. We'll see you, girls.
Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now that our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. <laughs>
God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us in Christ and the blood of life. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.